Hi, Martin Radnan here. We're currently working through the Level 2 Basic Word module from the ECDL Extra course. And we're now up to Lesson 13. We're going to use all the word processing skills that we've looked at so far in Lessons 1 to 12 to produce a suitably formatted memo to circulate to all the staff in the company about the upcoming staff get-together. The completed document will then be merged to a new document and prepared for emailing. During this session, we will discuss various skills, such as how to import a text file to a Word document, how to change the page orientation, spell checking and also adding words to the dictionary, changing the case, formatting the text, changing bullet styles, creating a table, adding clip art, and once we've done that, setting up a mail merge from an access database, and then emailing the merged document. So, let's head to the associated website, select Word, and then select Lesson 13 TTFN Sales. First, download the text that you will edit, which should look like this, and then also open your instructions. Now we also need to download the staff names database. So, we need to download the staff names database and save it for future use. You don't need to open it, all we're going to do is link the database to a Word document that we will be working on. Now, if you have difficulty downloading the file, you can create one with the field names forename and surname, and then add the details for a few records. So let's do that. Let's launch Microsoft Access, create a blank database, for the file name, let's call it Staff Names, and then click Create. We have a table called Table 1, which has nothing in it at all. At the moment, we're looking at the Normal view. What I want to do is to look at the Design view so that I can change the field names. So, View, and then Design View. Let's call the table Names, and then press OK. We already have a key field. I'm going to add in two extra fields. One of them is Forename, Tab, 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 then Surname, Tab, Tab, and make sure the data type is set as short text. Now let's go back to the regular view. So, save the table. And now let's enter some names. I'm just going to put three in. and then save the database. OK, so everybody should now have some database that they can use for the mail merge that we'll create later. OK, let's close that and get back to where we were. The file containing the text is not in a Word document, it's in a text file. Now we could copy and paste to add the text to a blank Word document, but we're going to try a different technique. Launch Word and create a blank document. From the Insert tab, head for the Text section, select the down arrow next to the word Object, and then select Text from File. 
we then want to navigate not through all Word documents, but through text files. And as we do, we will find our text file, which was called Christmas Party. So click and then insert. You'll be presented with a file conversion dialog box. We want to use the Windows default encoding and then press OK. OK, if I now zoom out, you'll see the whole document. So, we've downloaded and saved the staff names database. We've opened the Christmas party text file. We've opened a new document to import the text to. And now it wants us to set the page orientation to landscape. To do this, go for the Layout tab, and in the Page Setup section, Orientation, and select Landscape. That's the one that's wider than it is tall. Next, we're going to spell check the document. Now, if you're using Word 365, then from the Home tab, you'll see a button at the end called Editor. We don't have the Editor button, because the version of Word that I'm using at the moment, we need to go for Review, and then Spelling and Grammar. The first suggestion is the word Christmas should have a capital C. So, let's change that. Next, again, the word Christmas wants a capital C, so change that. Wednesday wants a capital W. Old Town, that is the name of a town, and it doesn't have a space, so we're going to ignore that suggestion. Homemade, I'll leave it as it is, so let's make the change. And now we'll find that the spelling and grammar check is complete. If you do find that various words, as indicated, are not in your dictionary, then what you would need to do is to select Add from the dialog box to be able to add these as new words so they will be accepted in future. OK, next, step five. Let's check that capital letters are used correctly throughout the document. And don't forget the address Holly Lodge, High Street, Oldham. OK, the first thing I'm going to do here is press Control a to select all the text. Then from the Home tab, let's change case. So from the Font section, select Change Case. And we're going to set sentence case. This is just to make sure that the first letter of each sentence is a capital. OK, let's make this a bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Now, TTFN is the name of the company and it wants to be in capitals. So, change case, uppercase. For the words supplies and limited, we want a capital for the first letter of each of these words. So, change case, capitalize each word. Staff Christmas party, again, capitalize each word. Christmas, capitalize each word. Wednesday, capitalize each word. December, capitalize each word. OK, moving across, Holly Lodge, High Street, Old Town, all of these five words should have a capital as the first letter. So select them, and then change case, capitalize each word. Next, Rebecca wants to be a capital, so capitalize each word for Rebecca. Friday capitalize the word. December, capitalize the word. Next, Rebecca wants a capital R, so again, capitalize each word. Conwy is the name of a county, 
so therefore wants a capital at the beginning of the word. Cheshire wants a capital for the beginning of the word. And finally, Christmas wants a capital at the beginning of the word. OK, as we scroll down, British also wants a capital for the B, so capitalise each word. And I think at that point, we're probably done. OK, let's scroll back to the top. We're now up to step six. Put the company name TTFN Supplies Limited into a font which is Chanson Heavy SF, size 18 and bold. So first of all, let's select the TTFN Supplies Limited, change the size to 18, make it bold, and the other thing it asked, it wanted a font which is Chanson Heavy SF. Let's have a look for it. And what we'll see is on my version of Word, I don't have it available. Let's find a heavy serif font. I'll go for Rockwell Extra Bold. OK, for the rest of the document, use either Verdana or Tahoma, whichever you prefer. So select from Memo down to the end of the document. Verdana. And for the size, I'm going to make it size 11. OK, next, let's change at the top the word memo so that it's bold, italic, and size 36. OK, so we've now completed step 8. Let's move on to step 9. The list of items following the words please note the following, that's starting from here, want to be put into a bulleted list using a particular bullet style which looks like the one shown. So first of all, let's put each of the items onto different lines. So just before the M of meat, press enter. That's meat for drinks at 7pm for a 7.30pm start. Then minibus transport home can be booked, please let Rebecca know. Then next line, minibus costs can be shared by those using them. And then finally, deposits cannot be refunded if you don't turn up. Now select the items, that's the four items starting from meat for drinks down to don't turn up. And this is where we want to apply a bulleted list. So to do this, go for the down arrow next to the bulleted list button, which you'll find from the home tab in the paragraph section. And select the bullet requested. OK, next, step 10. Put the menu into a suitably formatted table, and we suggest you use three columns. So, let's create a table that has three columns, one for each course, and two rows, one for the titles, and the other for the various choices. So, just after the word menu, press Enter, so we've got a bit of space to put a table. And now, insert, table, and we want three columns and two rows. OK, so first let's enter the names of the courses. So on the top row, starters, and then main courses, and finally desserts. Next, we want to cut and paste the various courses and place them on the second row under the correct heading. So, select from Parsnip down to Mustard Cream, right-click, cut, and then paste it into the first column, second row. Next, let's look for the main courses. That starts from roast breast down to red wine. 
So select that, cut, and then let's place this just under main courses. Next, the desserts. I'm going to assume this includes the coffee and mince pie as well. So select the relevant items, right click, cut, and then place this into the dessert section. Now let's do a little tidying up of the contents of the table. So let's get rid of the redundant asterisks and then check the layout looks OK. So I want to get rid of this asterisk. Backspace twice, backspace, backspace, backspace. Within the main courses, backspace, 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 and for the desserts, backspace, 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 and then let's get rid of all of these, not forgetting the asterisks underneath the table. OK, step 11, fit the whole document onto one page, and it does suggest we may need to adjust the margins. So, Let's change the margins to begin with to make them narrower. To do this, Layout, Margins, Narrow. Next, as far as the table's concerned, I could go a little bit wider with it. So let's go a little bit wider and then change the widths of each of the columns. And now I'm at the point where I've been able to fit everything onto one page as requested. OK, step 12. Let's now add some suitably festive clip art to the menu. So either find an image on your computer or alternatively find one online. OK, I've actually downloaded one to my computer, so I'm going to go Insert, Picture, and mine is called Images. Let's position it in the top right hand corner. And then resize it. OK, we've got the memo ready, so let's create a mail merge from it. So, click Mailings. Start Mail Merge, and then select Letters. For recipients, we want to use an existing list, and we want to select the Staff Names database that we created or downloaded earlier. Underneath the word Memo, Add a line starting with the word to, followed by a colon, then a space, and then let's insert some merge fields. So go for insert merge fields. We want forename, then we want a space, and then we want to put in surname. The size seems a bit big. So let's select the two forename surname and change the size to the same as we had before, which I think was size 12. OK, just for neatness, I could do with adding a line in before Staff Christmas Party and adding a line in after Staff Christmas Party. Now at this stage, I've noticed that we've moved over to more than one page. So I'm going to select everything from Staff Christmas Party to the end. And I think Verdana 11 might be a little bit too big. Let's see what happens if we go for size 10. And if we go for size 10, now I find I've got everything on one page. Perfect. Back to the Mailings tab. The final thing we want to do now is to merge the document. So, Mailings. Finish and Merge. This time we're going to go for Edit Individual Documents, as this creates a new document for us.
And the new document wants to be saved as Xmas Party Menu. And, as can be seen, it has created the mail merge for the three different people that were added to the database. In order to email the finished mail merge, go for File, then Share, Email, Send as Attachment. This will then open your default email program so you can specify who you're sending it to, you can enter a subject, and you can type a little note to accompany the attachment. So we've had a look at various formatting techniques that can improve the look of your tables. I hope you're able to make use of them, and they help professionalise the presentation of your work. Next time, we will return to delve a little deeper into mail merging. OK. I hope this is making sense, and I look forward to seeing you next time.